Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is the 802nd Rome Total War Brotherhood game that I've put onto YouTube. This battle was fought on the flat, grassy land map. This is a map that most players uh, fight on, and is hosted by Brotherhood member Crypto. Okay, our first teammate is Brotherhood member Canary. Now, Canary has got 13 infantry, one archer, and six cavalry. Okay, 13 infantry, one archer, six cavalry. Quick look at the upgrades on his cavalry. And he just got seven upgrades. That's an experienced stripe gold shield gold attack on his cavalry. So that looks a pretty good uh, Roman army to me. A tried and tested canary army, I'm guessing there. Our next teammate is Brotherhood member Aurelius, who's got his faction of choice, Greek cities. Now he's got just ten Spartans, five archers, and five cavalry. So that's an unusual Greek cities army build, as I'm sure you would agree there. Just ten Spartans. And there you are, he's got his light cavalry there with seven upgrades on, experience, stripe, gold shield, gold attack. These guys, you'd be surprised, are quite tough actually for light cavalry. And of course, they're very fast to move around the battlefield, hitting archers, enemy archers, and things like that. So that's a pretty good um, army there, I think, but only ten Spartans? Hmm. Okay, um, our next teammate is Brother Member Mars. Now, Mars has got 13 pikes, two archers, and five cavalry. Okay. Look at the upgrades on his, um, I think if I remember right, he's got mixed upgrades on his pikemen. There they are. Um, now remember the eight upgrades on Macedonian pikemen are the optimum upgrades there. Two experienced stripes, gold shield, gold attack. Um, if you put a third stripe on it, you don't get good value for money. So two uh, stripes is, is good there. And just look at the length of those Macedonian pikes that the enemy troops have got to fight down to kill the man on the other end there. So... As I say, the vast majority of his pikes have got eight upgrades on, two experienced stripes, gold shield, gold attack. But here you can see he's only got three upgrades on, so I'm guessing that is gold defense there. That's what I'm guessing. But these two units down the other end have only got two upgrades on, so I'm guessing just silver defense there maybe. So he certainly has got um, really mixed upgrades on his pikes. And then you want to have a look at his cavalry, just got gold shield, gold attack on his cavalry. But something I'd like to mention here, most cavalry units have only got a six charge bonus. These guys we also call the winged horsemen, because you can see like the wings on their helmets. But as I say, most cavalry units have only got a six charge bonus. These guys have got a ten charge bonus. Now remember the charge bonus is the impact and penetration that a unit can do. And as I say, most cavalry units just got six charge bonus. These guys have got ten. These winged horsemen have got ten um, there, so uh, quite formidable cavalry there. And our last teammate is myself, Spartan Commander, who's got a very old Roman army of 13 infantry and 6 cavalry. Yep, just 13 infantry and 6 cavalry. So there you are, quite a diverse team, I suppose, there. Really, we've got Rome there, then we've got Greek cities, Macedon, and Rome. Should be a great one for you to watch, and I hope you enjoy it. And here is the other team. We have Brotherhood member Crypto, who was the host of this battle. Now, he's just got 10 infantry, 6 cavalry, and 4 archers. This is like the standard Roman army that Crypto brings. Quick look at the upgrades there, and you'll see that he's got 8 upgrades on his cavalry there. That's 2 experienced stripes, gold shield, gold attack on his cavalry there. And there you are, that's, uh, that's his basic infantry formation there. And as I say, this is a standard Roman army that uh, Crypto brings. Okay, our next teammate is Brotherhood member Mad King. Now, Mad King has got 12 infantry, 6 cavalry, and 2 archers. 12 infantry, 6 cavalry, and 2 archers there. And if we could quick look at his army there, you'll notice here that Mad King's got um, an eagle unit there. Which, of course, will be giving morale to his infantry. Now, he's done this for a particular reason, and that's because his general is a cavalry general. Okay, so the reason that he's bought that eagle unit is so that his eagle unit there can be given morale boost to his infantry during the course of the battle. Okay, so that means he can then take his cavalry general around the battlefield with the rest of his cavalry so that his general morale bonus is then being given to his cavalry. Quick look at the upgrades on his cavalry. He's just got gold shield, gold attack on his cavalry there. Uh, this is a very old school, old fashioned um, general unit here. If you notice, fully upgraded, three experienced stripes, gold shield, gold attack, the Roman armored general. Okay, now up to about 15, maybe 16 years ago, we all used to bring this as our Roman general before most of us changed to an infantry general. So this is very old school, old fashioned, and it'll be interesting to see how well he uses this um, unit around the battlefield during the course of the battle there. So, 
you know, I think that's a tried and tested um, army there. Be interested to see how well he uses it during the course of the battle. Their next teammate is Brotherhood member Uther. Now, Uther's just got seven pikes, five archers, and six cavalry. Now, Uther is really trying with his Seleucid um, faction here. Um, he's trying different armies, different tactics, and everything like that. Now, he's got eight upgrades on his pikes, so that's two experienced stripes, gold shield, gold attack. Just look at the length of those pikes that our men have got to fight down to try and kill the man on the other end. But just seven pikes. Is that enough for the modern day uh, 31k army? I guess we'll just have to see. Quick look at the upgrades on his um, archers there. You see he's got a gold shield, gold attack on his archers. Now let's have a look at his cataphracts. These are going to probably be the main strength of his army there. And then you've already got eight upgrades. Two experienced stripes, gold shield, gold attack on his cataphracts there. Remember we call these guys the tanks of the ancient world because they're armoured from head to toe. And used correctly, they can be quite devastating cavalry there. Okay, as I say, um, this is Uther's kind of faction of choice on Rome Total War now. He's really trying to persevere with Seleucids here. And there you are, he's got, um, I think that's one, two, fully upgraded armoured cavalry general there. Okay, so he's actually got that as well. I say very, very old school having armoured cavalry generals as your general. And as you can see there, Uther's giving that a try. As I say, he really is trying with the Seleucid faction here, um, trying to get it as good as he can. So it'll be interesting to see how well he does that during the course of the battle. Um, their next teammate is Brotherhood member Barkleyman. Now, Barkleyman has got 13 uh, Sacred Banner Spearmen, 3 Slingers, and 2 Cavalry. And of course, this is his faction of choice on uh, Rome Total War. If you notice here, the forward units of his battle formation have just got gold shield, gold attack on. That's because they're going to take the uh, make the first contact with the enemy. They're going to take the pilots. They're going to take a lot of casualties there, being at the front of the battle formation. But hopefully weaken enemy troops. Then for his more elite upgraded troops in the rear of his battle formation there, who have got eight upgrades on. Two experienced stripes, gold shield, gold attack to move forward and take out the weakened enemy troops. Okay, so if you count there, look, two experienced stripes, gold shield, gold attack on the rear units of his battle formation there. As I say, this is a tried and tested um, army there of um, Barclay Mans. And there you are, he's got his cavalry there. His uh, sacred band cavalry with uh, gold shield, gold attack on as well. So uh, there you go, that's, uh, that's the enemy team there. I think quite diverse, you've got Rome there, you've got Rome with Mad King, and then you've got Seleucid there, and then you've got Carthage. Let's say it's got the potential to be a cracking battle, and I really hope you enjoy it. Okay, at this stage of the battle, I thought we'd have a look at Aurelius' battle formation here. Can you see that he split his Spartans into two mini armies of five units in each army? Now, that's quite good because that makes um, the, the maneuverability and the flexibility of the Greek cities um, quite useful there with two armies. But you have to use them very carefully because this small army look could be attacked at the front, could be attacked at the flank there to pin and hold the Spartans and then the enemy could get cavalry in behind and smash into the back of those engaged Spartans so yeah it's, it's, it's quite a good flexibility idea having two small Spartan armies but you have to use them extremely carefully as I say otherwise um, as say they could get um, flanked and hit in the rear by enemy cavalry so I have to watch out for that and also here's a rather strange uh, un well unusual thing Morris says that he wants to take on Carthage with his Macedonian army which raised a few eyebrows in our team because as we know Carthage punches above its weight against these big 120 man units but Morris says that this is his anti-Carthage army and anti-Carthage battle formation so he wants to take on Carthage um, but I know both uh, myself and Canary uh, reminded him about how good Carthage is up against the big 121 man units. So uh, during the course of the battle we just have to see whether Mars is going to lock horns with Carthage or whether uh, we with our Roman armies might do that instead. Okay, at this very, very early stage of the battle here, you'll see Crypto taking his archers forward, as he always does. Probably looking to target Canary's um, cavalry there. Look. You see, that's a nice aggressive move there by Crypto. You'll notice in all the battles that we play, when he brings his Roman army, he always advances his archers forward there. Hopefully trying to pick off um, enemy troops there. 
Now at the moment here he's probably um, in a bit of an archer battle with the Cretan archers. Now remember these auxiliary Roman archers have got armour that they wear. So their defence is going to be better than the Cretan archers there who don't have any armour. So as I say there you can see um, Aurelius is Cretan archers and um, Crypto's archer auxiliaries there. Exchanging arrows. Pause the game for a second there. So I say, if you look at the, the Cretan archers, wherever you look at the Cretan archers, you'll see there that they don't wear any armour. You can see Mad King's um, cavalry general there, probably looking to target these archers of Aurelius. It wouldn't surprise me if he did that. Um, and you can see Aurelius moving one of his mini armors forward towards his archers there to defend against that possibility. As I say, if you look at the Cretan archer, can you see they don't wear armor, so their defense is not very good. They um, have got long range and they've got a good rate of fire, but without any armor, their defense is quite low. So if they get into an archer battle there, it's um, they can sometimes come off worse just because they've got no armor. Let's say here, a canary here, a good bit of teamwork. Look, he's moved a couple of cavalry units forward there to protect Aurelius's archers from any um, opportunist cavalry hit there by the enemy. As I say, it looks to me like Mad King's fast-moving armoured cavalry general is definitely loitering with intent there. I would say, is uh, if the police would arrest him for loitering with intent, I think, if the police were involved in this battle. But that's what he looks like he's doing to me. Definitely loitering with intent, and his intent would be to hit enemy cavalry, uh, sorry, enemy archers, if he gets a chance. Okay. Now over here you'll see, there you can see Uther bringing his fast-moving armoured cavalry general down as well. Here, so, let's say Mad King and Uther here with, um, Armoured Cavalry Generals, very, very unusual to see this on the 31k battlefield. Reminds me of battles we used to fight 15, 16 years ago when, uh, as I say, a lot of people bought Armoured Cavalry Generals as their general. Now this could be a really nice hit here for Uther if he can smash in to Aurelius' archers before um, we can get any cavalry over to cover them. There you are. You can see that uh, Armoured Cavalry General going to smash into Aurelius' Cretan archers here. Look, get ready for this. Um, Bang! As he smashes in there. Probably going to route there. You are routed one of those. You can see Canary bringing his cavalry unit forward. There you are. You can see Mad King that was loitering with intent. Bringing his um, fast moving general into the fray as well. Trying to hit archers here. Now did you see how Mad King delayed moving his um, armoured cavalry general back then? Did you see how he drew Canary's um, cavalry onto him? That's so that um, Crypto look could then uh, shoot arrows into Canary's cavalry unit there. So that was a nice tactical, sneaky little move there by Mad King. You don't see that very often. You used to see that quite a lot in the kind of old days of Rome Total War, that type of tactic. Draw enemy cavalry into archer range there, look, which is a good move there by Mad King. Still messing around there with his general, look, still trying to look to draw cavalry onto him there. You can see Aurelius there moving forward with his armoured cavalry general as well. As I say, three armoured cavalry generals. Very rare to see in today's battlefield. And there you are. You can see there that uh, Seleucid um, armoured cavalry general of Uther's there. Smashing into um, Aurelius's cavalry general there. As I say, it's very, very rare to see two armoured cavalry general units there from opposing teams fighting each other there. There's the, uh, the Greek city's general up. There with his um, armoured uh, cavalry unit there. And there's a Sally Sid a general there as well. So unusual to see that, as I say, on the modern 31k battlefield. This is what was happening 16, 17, 18 years ago. So uh, very, uh, very old school this is. And there you already can see Mad King's armoured cavalry general coming across as well. Uh, Going to smash into a religious general. Look, I'm bang as they collide there on the battlefield. Remember they've, they're all fully upgraded. These armoured cavalry generals got two hit points as well and I think Aurelius is doing well to get his general unit out the fray there because the Seleucid armoured cavalry general was coming in there. Nice cover once again by Canary look, bringing his two cavalry units in there to cover there to help Aurelius' general unit to get away there. But you can see Crypto brought his cavalry over as well because there's no archers this end look to, to um, be able to target his cavalry there. So Crypto felt that he could just take his cavalry forward there. As I say, those archer units that were there have been taken out by enemy um, armoured cavalry generals there. So it'll be interesting to see if the enemy starts an attack on this right flank of ours, looking at the enemy's disposition. 
Okay, at this very, very early stage of the battle, you'll he see here that Mars is, is advancing his Macedonian army towards the enemy team there. Now, of course, we know that these 121-man um, units are extremely susceptible to any kind of missile damage. And make no mistake, Uther's Seleucid archers will be shooting loads of arrows into the Macedonian pikemen of Mars. So uh, Mars will be losing a lot of his pikemen there from those um, archers. I'm advancing my Roman army forward there, probably towards Carthage there. Um, as I say, both Canary and myself raised our concerns with Mars about him trying to take on Carthage, Carthage with his uh, Macedonian army. So it looks now that um, my Roman army will be heading towards Carthage. And it'll be interesting to see how Mars has decided he's going to use his Macedonian army in this battle. So, um, as I say, the way that he's positioned his army there, it looks like he may well go for Mad King's Brutii infantry there. From what I can see, let's pause again for a second. So I think what what we've decided now is that I'm going to move towards Embarcimas Carthage army there, so I can throw loads of pilers into um, the Carthaginian sacred band units there to weaken them before we get into any hand-to-hand -hand fighting. And there you'll see Mars, as I say, looks to me like he's going to target Mad King's Brutio army, and you can see one of um, Aurelius is mini Greek city's army is moving towards um, Mad King as well there. Okay, so as I say there, you can see uh, the Carthage army there of Barclay Mad. And as I say, the archers of Uther here will be shooting, you can see them shooting loads and loads of arrows into Morris's Macedonian units there. And as I say, the big 121 man units of Macedon, Seleucid, uh, Thrace, and things like that, they're very susceptible to missile damage. But as I say, over there, you can see Canary and. Um, Aurelius moving forward there but here goes the Macedonian army with their pikes down moving very slowly towards um, the Brutia army of Mad King you can see I'm moving my a Roman army now towards the Carthaginians there what I would like to do is pin and hold the Carthage army there to stop Barclay man getting his Carthage army um, against our Macedonian ally there now over here you'll see that um, Aurelius sorry a Mars is um, archers there We'll be shooting into the Seleucid archers there of Uther, trying to weaken them. So that's what uh, um, those archers of uh, Mars will be doing there. But as I say, here you can see, to me, definitely looks like um, Mars is going to attack the enemy Brutii um, army here. Make no mistake, there's, look at the arrows and the missiles. Now the pilots of the Brutii Roman army going into the forward units of Mars' uh, battle formation there. Just look at those pilots going in there. Now to say these units are so susceptible to any kind of missile damage, they will be losing a lot of men there from that. Okay, now this is a nice tactical move here from Crypto. Do you remember Crypto was on the other flank where his cavalry is? And he's now moving his infantry over here now, over to the other flank there. Now why, the reason he's done that is to cover his Carthage allies army there from my army. He knows that I want to throw loads of pilots into that Carthage army of Barclay Mans. So um, Crypto's bringing his Roman army over there to try and cover his Carthage ally there with his Roman army. So that's a nice, uh, nice teamwork move there by Crypto, and you can see that Barclay Man has left a couple of his um, spear units there um, in open order there to soak up some of my pilots. But here, look at um, the aggressiveness of Mars there, moving his Macedonian Pike army slowly forward there into the enemy uh, troops with the big long pikes there. This is I notice here, do you see that Mad Kings put some of his units into Testudo? This is the classic Roman defence against pike and spear attack there. Can you see that unit's just going into Testudo there? This other unit is actually in Testudo. And if I remember right, he advances that unit into the Macedonian pike unit there. Can you see that? That unit's in um, Testudo, look. But Mad King is advancing it into that Macedonian pike unit there. And look how much penetration that unit in Testudo has got into that pike unit. I mean, it's very interesting to see that. You don't see that tactic used very often of where a Roman generals put their units into Testudo and then advance them into pike and spear units. So I just thought you'd find that quite interesting there. You can say, as I say, Crypto there will be throwing loads of pilots into Morris's army there. Um, there you can see one of Morris's um, forward units is already routed there. Um, from damage from missiles there as you can see I've got my Roman army there I'll be throwing pilots into um, 
Crypto's army there. Now, meanwhile, over here on the right flank, you'll remember that Crypto's cavalry is very well upgraded. I believe they've got eight upgrades on, two experience stripes, gold shield, gold attack. So very well upgraded. We need to watch out for that cavalry. Let's say Aurelius is a mini army here. He may well move in to try and take on the Seleucids along with Canary. You can see Canary's um, Scipio army there. Already Aurelius has committed one of his mini armies into attacking uh, Mad King's Brutio infantry there. As I say, Mars is engaged here with a, um, a couple of Carthage units as well as Mad King's Brutio units. There. You can see Barkley Man um, advancing there with one of his Carthage units. Now here, as I say, I've got my Roman army. I've thrown in a lot of pilers into those Carthage units and into some of Crypto's units there. Okay, and as I say, it'd be interesting to see if Mars is going to advance or if he's just going to hold there with his massive Macedonian army. Okay, but uh, what worries me a little bit, looking at the disposition of the enemy troops on our right flank here, I um, I think there could be uh, maybe a little bit of trouble there on our right flank. We'll have to see, because remember the enemy have got a cavalry advantage over us already because our Greek city's ally has only got light cavalry and the enemy have got heavy cavalry there now here you can see there I just wanted to show you the difference if you look at the short spears of the Spartans now just if you can keep that mentally in your mind the length of the Spartan spears and look at the length of the Seleucid pikes there so straight away you'll see in a head-on fight the long pikes of Seleucid are going to have a big advantage over the short spears of Spartans. Yes, the Spartans have got two hit points and excellent specifications, but there's still a big advantage there with the length of the pikes. Here you can see Mad King's Bruto army being attacked by Canaries blue Scipio army and as I say the other army the mini army of Aurelius is fighting a uh, Mad King's Brutio army at the same time there so there's a, a general overview of the battle as it looks at the moment but as I say at the rear here Crypto's got those well upgraded um, SBQR cavalry in behind us there he may well feel confident with the upgrade he's got on his cavalry on attacking our cavalry there you are he's going to go for Canary's cavalry there now is Canary going to take him on and maybe bring some infantry units in and bring his other cavalry units over as well that's what uh, canary may well do there we just have to see yep there you go you can see canary now is bringing over some infantry units there to take on crypto's cavalry and he's also bringing his canary is bringing his cavalry in as well look and bang as the infantry and cavalry smash into crypto's cavalry there I think crypto was a bit slow in pulling his cavalry out there might have been a little bit of lag in this game possibly um, I can't remember to be honest there but uh, as I say crypto appeared to be a bit slow in pulling his cavalry out there he's not usually slow so I say it might have been a bit of lag there that uh, co cost him a cavalry unit over here this is a nice move by Aurelius newer players to Rome Total War this is a good tactical move he's got his cavalry that he's brought around the flank there not he's brought around the flank there and he's got now got his cavalry okay they only like cavalry but he's got them in behind the enemy troops there so um, you know he could look for targets to smash his cavalry into if he wants to nice tactical move there by release now here you are you can see that he, the short spears of his spartans here he's going to take on the seleucid pikes head on there but as i say the moment that um those spartans get in range of those pikes are going to start losing men can you see that they're already starting to lose men there that before they can even reach the Seleucid pikemen Do you see because the shortness of the Spartan spears that they can't even get in range of the Seleucid pikemen before they start losing men themselves this is a nice hit by Crypto's SBQR cavalry look, and bang as he smashes into the rear of a, a couple of Canaries units there routed a couple of Canaries uh, units there but as I say um, it looks to me like um, Crypto has lost about half his cavalry. I think he had six cavalry units. I think he only got three left. Right, here comes Mad King's cavalry. Now, he had good upgrades on his cavalry as well. Get ready for this. Look. And bang! As he smashes in to Canary's infantry there. Let's say Canary's infantry and cavalry have been taking a bit of a hammering here on this right flank of ours. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if Crypto charged his cavalry in as well there. So that could be um, bad news. As I say, our right flank always looked a bit delicate to me. Now over here you'll see that the Seleucid cataphracts that Uther's got, he looks like he's going to smash into the Spartans. It's this mini army of Aurelius here while he's being pinned and held by the um, Seleucid pikemen. So that's a very aggressive cavalry hit there by Uther, I think, there with his um, cataphracts. Be interested to see what happens there. 
As I say here, you see Crypto here fighting a Mars is Pikeman there, and you've got a couple of Carthaginian, two or three Carthage Sacred Band units involved in that as well. And as I say, I've moved around the left flank here, trying to put a bit of pressure on the left flank. Hopefully, um, they'll bring reinforcements over from our right flank over to this flank here, taking a bit of pressure off our right flank. You see, I've got my cavalry locked and loaded, and you can see Barclay Man there has got his cavalry there as well. So it'll be interesting. Now, what I would like to do is take my cavalry over to the other flanklet to help my allies fight the enemy cavalry on that flank. Okay, that's what I would like to do. I'd love to take my cavalry over there to help my teammates, but I know that Barkley Man's waiting for me to move my cavalry over there, so he'll put his cavalry about there, put them in wedge formation, and then smash into the flank of my infantry, knowing that my cavalry is on the other flank. So I've got to leave my cavalry there to protect my infantry from the possible possibility of a Carthage hit into the flank of my infantry. Um, and also, he'll probably move his um, spearman forward there to pin and hold my units as he smashes into the flank there with my with his cavalry. So unfortunately, I can't take my cavalry over to the other flank to help my allies. But meanwhile, here you'll see the Seleucid cataphracts there and smashing into those Greek city units and bang as they smash in there. Oh my gosh! And yet, Aurelius's units still hold in there. Can you see that? Or three of them are anyway there. Remember these uh, Greek city Spartan units got two hit points, excellent specifications and excellent morale as well. But uh, there you are, you can see them um, still moving forward towards the Seleucid infantry there. And you can see those um, cataphracts closing. Now, there could well be a massive cavalry hit into the back of Aurelius' infantry there. I can see Mad King's cavalry over here as well. They may well decide to smash into the back there, which could rout Aurelius' mini army there. Remember, he had five units in that army. He's only got three left now, from what I can see. Meanwhile, over here, you'll see Canary's cavalry there. It's just routed what was left, I think, of Crypto's cavalry. And you'll see that Mars has brought his companion cavalry over with their nine charge bonus here to help on this flank as well. But there goes the Seleucid cataphracts and again they come bang as they charge in there. Make no mistake, Uther will be using their alt attack weapon, the effective against armor mace. And there you, are, you can see Mad King charging back in again there. Look, and bang as he charges back in there. Make no mistake, they'll be trying to take Canaris General out there. Remember the square flag? of a unit is the general unit there and you can see here Mad King charges cavalry and there he was Mars great support there by Mars and there's some more of Canaris cavalry charging in there like a bang and bang now make no mistake whoever wins this cavalry battle I think is going to go on to win the battle here okay this cavalry battle could prove pivotal and decisive to the outcome of the battle here okay so you've got Mad King's uh, cavalry there and you've got the Seleucid cataphracts there against Macedonian and our blue Scipioi allies there so whoever as I say whoever wins the cavalry there battle is going to get him behind enemy troops and smash them up pretty good I, th I would think right here you'll see that um, I'm trying to be very aggressive with my infantry backed up with my cavalry I'm still watching that uh, Carthage sacred band cavalry there if they try to attack my flank but what I'm going to do is I'm going to press forward now into these enemy troops in front of me I'm going to try and put a lot of pressure on this flank here to try and draw reinforcements from the enemy up to this flank here, therefore taking pressure off of our flank on the other side there. Here you'll see a Crypto and Barkley man there really pushing in on Mars' army. Now this is a nice tactical move here by Aurelius in one of his mini armies there. If you notice um, there, can you see how he's gone through the gap in the enemy battle line there to get in behind enemy troops? Nice tactical move. You can see that mini army was fighting there, look. Because you can see um, Spartan dead on the battlefield there. But what it is, Aurelius has noticed, look, a gap between Uther and Crypto there. See the gap between there? So Aurelius has just gone straight through that gap and is going to get in behind the enemy troops. Great tactical move. New players to Rome Total War. Please make note of that. That is a really good tactical move there. Battlefield awareness move there by Aurelius. But over here, look, you can see the massive cavalry battle going. As I say, whoever wins here, I think, could, could well go on to win the battle here. This was a, a massive cavalry attack. Those cataphracts of Uther, don't forget, when you all attack them, they use effective against armor maces. Oh my gosh. So that's Canary's general has just been routed there by the Seleucid cataphracts. And now the rear of Canary's infantry is open to be smashed into by those cataphracts there. So, and also Mad King's Brutii cavalry could charge in there as well. So, as I say, our right flank here, I think, could be, um, well, 
uh, in a very precarious situation. There goes the Selicic Cataphracts look, looking to smash into the back of Canary's blue Scipio infantry. Look and bang! Now that was a hammer and anvil attack. A classic hammer and anvil attack there. If you notice, you'll see that um, it was Uther's um, pikes that were the anvil and Uther's cavalry were the hammer there. Hammer and anvil attack. Right, you can see Mars has brought his companion cavalry with their 10 charge bonus over here. Let's smash into the enemy troops there. Now what I've just done with my cavalry, we missed the actual attack. Sorry, uh, so much going on at the moment. I had my cavalry over there, if you remember, and I've charged them through here to smash into the flank of engaged enemy troops. And if you notice there, I've routed a few enemy uh, units there with my cavalry. So that's what I've done there, uh, taking out those units there. But over here on our right flank, as I say, if you look now, you'll see most of Canary's army that was holding our right flank um, has now been taken out. And the enemy looked to me now they could roll us up from right to left. Now Canera's got a couple of his um, cavalry units left. There are about four battle damaged cavalry units there. But for all intents and purposes, our right flank and our right centre have been taken out. Okay, so well done to the enemy team there. And they are now going to roll us up from right to left. Make no mistake about that. They're going to smash into our flank and rear there. And as I say, try and roll us up from right to left. There, so as I say, I've put a lot of pressure on this flank with my infantry there. I've moved over towards um, my Macedonian ally there, try and give him a bit of support. If you notice there, I've integrated my army with Mars' Macedonian units there, as I say, trying to strengthen that part of the battle line um, there. So I uh, say there's uh, a lot going on in this battle all over the place at the same time. Now this was a nice hit here, a nice hammer and anvil attack here by Crypto and Uther. Crypto's cavalry being the hammer look and um, Uther's spikes being the anvil. I always like to see a nice hammer and anvil attack. So that mini army of one of uh, the mini armies of Aurelius has now been completely taken out in that hammer and anvil attack between Crypto and um, Uther there. Nice, uh, as I say, nice hammer attack there. So unfortunately, that's one of um, Aurelius' um, Greek city's armies taken out. There's his other Greek city's army there. It'd be interesting to see how the enemy team are going to deal with this. But as I say, now you can see we've got no allies on our right flank at all. And our right flank has now been taken out. And our right centre as well is has been taken out as well. So that uh, mini army of Aurelius is, we'll have to see what he's going to do. But he could be surrounded there. Look at how Mars's Macedonian army has been greatly weakened. So I think that one unit's got 13 men in. That's all out of a 121-man unit. So it just goes to show how weakened his army is there. And as I say here, I'm moving towards that Carthage sacred band line there. Can you see how aggressive I'm going to be? Now, there's a reason for me doing this, okay? Can you see how I'm really going to press in to those Carthage sacred band units? Okay, now there is a definite, a tactical reason that I'm going to do this. Can you see, if you look around the battlefield, can you see why I'm going to press with my infantry into these Carthage sacred band units. Look around the battlefield, look behind the enemy team. Can you see what I'm looking to do here? Okay, a tactical attack here, a battlefield awareness attack. Um, here, what I wanted to show you. Okay, can you see my cavalry here? Now, what I want to do with my cavalry is smash through those two SBQR units and go into the back of that Carthage general. Okay, so I want to smash through those two SBQR units and take out the Carthage General. Remember, take the General out, take the morale bonus away from the enemy troops. If you notice, I'm really pushing with my infantry. So my infantry is going to be the anvil there, really pressing in to the enemy troops there as an anvil. And my cavalry is going to be the hammer. Now, can I smash through those two SBQR units and take out that Carthage General? Okay, so that's what I'm looking to do. Watch my cavalry here. I'm going to try, as I say, try and smash into the rear of that Carthage general. Right, see my cavalry going through there? Look, um, bang! As they charge in there, look at my cavalry piercing through there into that Carthage general. And yes, I've managed to do what I wanted to do there. So we've routed the Bar Barclay Man's Carthage general there in a classic hammer and anvil attack. And we took out one of those SBQR infantry units as well on the charge through there. So now we've taken away the general morale bonus from Carthage there. You can see Mars bringing his Macedonian troops in as well. Nice um, teamwork move there 
by um, Mars there. He's got his cavalry attacking as well. And there's that sacred band cavalry of Carthage that I've been watching for a long time during the course of the battle. He looks to me like he's going to smash into the rear of my infantry there with those sacred band cavalry. I need to watch that very closely. Here you can see the cataphracts of Uther. He may well get round the rear of my troops to smash into the rear of my Scipio troops as well. So we need to watch this very carefully. Okay, because that uh, that could be a make or break of the battle. But as I say, you can see our right flank and right centre has been broken there. And the enemy really are trying to roll us up from right to left. Okay, over here that you'll see Mad King's cavalry with their great upgrades. Look, looks like he's going to try and smash into, um, into our infantry as well. So it'll be interesting to see what's happened there. But as I say, that cavalry hit um, by my um, cavalry there took out them of the uh, Carthage general, which is just what I wanted to do. And there you can see that Carthage sacred band cavalry smashing into the back of my infantry there. I think there's a cavalry unit. Oh, that's uh, Aurelius's general just been taken out by the Seleucid cataphracts there. You can see that companion cavalry there, the Carthage companion cavalry there as well. And there you can see the cataphracts of Uther looking to charge in uh, to my infantry as well. See the cataphracts of Uther charging in there. And uh, you can see Mad King's cavalry was charging in there as well. Oh my gosh, just look at those cataphracts of Uther. Really aggressive. Remember he had eight upgrades on, two experience strikes, gold shield, gold attack. Make no mistake, he will alt attack there and be using his effective against armor maces. There you can see my cavalry there now attacking those sacred band cavalry of Barclaymans. If you look closely, can you see that I've alt attacked with my cavalry? Can you see... My guys are using a heavy sword. Remember, they charge in with a light lance, but you should alt attack as soon as the melee starts so you can use your heavy sword. Your heavy sword does a lot more damage than the light lance in melee. Okay, and you'll see that Barkley Man has also alt attacked with his sacred band units there because they're using their heavy swords as well. Okay, so we both alt attack there, but it looks like my Scipio troops are outnumbering the um, Carthage troops there. At the rear here, you'll see um, some of Barkley Man's cavalry has been routed there. And you'll see that Mad King has routed some of the light cavalry of Aurelius is there as well. Okay. So there's a general disposition at the moment. You can see um, Aurelius' his army there is being a little bit surrounded by um, enemy Seleucid pikes and Brutii infantry there. So what I'm doing now, I'm going to run my infantry over to try and support um, Aurelius there. If you notice there, I see my blue Scipio army. I'm moving as fast as I can over towards um, Aurelius' army there. Stop it being surrounded. And you can see my infantry actually charge into the enemy infantry there. Let's move forward. And you can see um, Mars bringing his pike units across as well. Nice bit of support there for Aurelius there against the enemy troops. I can see some Macedonian cavalry charging in there of Mars as well into those Seleucid points like a bang as he charges in there. Nice hit there. And took out the Seleucid general as well. Now just to show you here, Mad King was just about going to charge his cavalry in to help the infantry of himself and his allies there. But he saw that... Uh, both his infantry and the Seleucid infantry and Carthage infantry had just been routed there, so there was no chance. There was no reason to charge his cavalry in there. He couldn't help his infantry anymore because they'd routed, and he would have just lost a lot of his cavalry. So he's pulled them back. There you can see Canary still got some cavalry left there, um, and it'll be interesting to see what happens now. It looks to me, I've got my cavalry, my very very battle damaged cavalry up there. Um, it'll be interesting to see how I'm going to use that now towards the end of the battle. But for all intents and purposes, it looks to me like we've taken out all the enemy infantry. And it just looks to me like it's Mad King's cavalry left. He may well go for my very battle-damaged cavalry there with his cavalry. But um, as I say, I can see now a lot of the, um, the enemy are now admitting defeat. And I think it's just at this stage of the battle, it's just Mad King's cavalry that's left. All the, um, the rest of the enemy troops have... Uh, have now either been admitted defeat or have been taken out. So it wouldn't surprise me if Mad King actually admits defeat. That they were, he's just admitted defeat. Um, no, no point in carrying on the battles lost there, and our team has just about managed to go on to um, to win the battle. But what uh, a spread out battle it is, and what an intense battle! Can you see Canary has just got four battle damaged cavalry units left, and that is the entirety of his army. That's all he's got left. 
oh my gosh so you can see how tough this battle was a real grinding down battle of attrition there i think and you can see here um i think uh our greek city's ally there aurelius i mean what's he got three units left it's oh no he's got about five units left but very very battle depleted there all those units so i remember he lost one complete army our macedonian ally here he still got some units left there remember those are 121 man units so they've been very battle depleted as well during the course of the battle as i say it was a real grinding down battle of attrition there and as i say quite a reasonably spread out battle as well I remember it started all the way over on our right flank where the enemy took out our right flank there and you could just see all the piles of dead you can always tell where the most intense fighting is on the battlefield uh, and that's just by all the massive piles of dead here as we move across the battlefield there you can see loads and loads of dead there cavalry and infantry on top of each other there the bodies just piled up over here that you can see the red cloaked spartans there see that line of red cloaked spartans i'm guessing that line was killed by pilers because i can't see any enemy troops around that red line there i was guessing they were killed by missiles there but over here that you can see this is where aurelius's army was taken out that mini army of aurelius is there those five units were taken out there by the enemy there there so um he did quite well i thought he held quite a long time there but uh, eventually he was surrounded and taken out and then over here that you can see the dead body see how the brutio infantry have died look holding their shields up can you see the shields are stuck in the ground but stuck up um up like you see what i mean they're very unusual to see that there with all those um shields like kind of stuck in the ground upright there just at an angle and over here you can see as i say we move across the battlefield here you can see the banners of uh, macedon and carthage there as we move across the battlefield there of units taken out over here as well look. you can see there was lots of cavalry and infantry and um, battles going on there by just seeing the um the dead infantry and cavalry laid on top of each other there so you can see there was a lot of uh fighting going on there between cavalry and infantry so there's the uh, battlefield there I say wherever you look you can see dead there and as i say our team has um just about managed to go on to um to win the battle there okay so um the first thing i'd like to say is really well played to everybody in the game i thought everybody played really well guys great battle there as i say i think there might have been a little bit of lag in this game but i can't really remember to be honest and you can see it was an average victory there so i think we were lucky to get into average there and the highest kills in the game get ready for this highest kills in the game goes to uther seleucid with his experimental seleucid army there with only seven was it seven pikes i think that's all he had he got 1535 kills the highest kills in the whole game with his experimental seleucid army so really well done to uther my guess is that he got most of the kills with those um, well upgraded cataphracts did you see how he was taking around the battlefield smashing into um our team there so well done to him well done to crypto got some good kills with his um, army there very aggressive right from the start of the battle and good battlefield awareness as well well done to mad king as i say if we get less than a thousand kills we are a little bit disappointed uh, he'll be a bit disappointed with that but he played well so well done to mad king there a good support as well and he did really well with his cavalry did you see how he's moving his well upgraded cavalry around the battlefield and as i say well done to uther highest kills in the game with his experimental seleucid army there as i say only seven pikes as well in that army so well done to him and well done to barkerman just got over a thousand kills there with his carthage army so well done his faction of choice so well done guys uh, my kills um yeah okay not too bad not brilliant but yeah okay and i see i still got quite a few troops left as well so yeah i'm quite pleased with that really and uh, well done to canary he held well on that right flank for ages there against massive odds as well so well done to canary there holding that flank as long as he did there and uh, well done to mars there got some good kills with his macedonians there even though he was suffering loads of casualties from missiles he did really well there with that uh, macedonian army and well done to aurelius second highest kills in the game employing those two mini spartan armies so really well done to, uh, to him as well so really well played guys uh, a great battle who do you think had faction advantage here the enemy's got rome rome seleucid and carthage 
Okay, so that's their team. I thought that's quite strong. We got Rome, Rome, Macedon, and Greek cities. Which do you think um, had faction advantage here? Which team do you think? And just to say, we play Rome Total War every Friday and Saturday night. If you enjoy watching our battles, why not come and join us? You would be more than welcome to come and um, join in our battles there. And if it's a good battle, you may well see yourself on this YouTube channel leading your armies. This is Spark Commander saying bye for now and see you soon.